morning everybody don't you just love a good road trip well the interstate highway system makes that possible and it was on this date june 29 in 1956 that president eisenhower signed legislation associated with the interstate highway act creating the interstate highway system Many people think the first American car was this one, the Duryea Motor Wagon from 1893, but it was only a few years later in 1902 that AAA got started. So AAA got started before the Model T came, and AAA will be behind a lot of the early highway legislation. And this group, which has to do with highway standards, also is from that time period, around 1914. So two private groups have a lot to do with the early highways. In 1916, Congress passed the Federal Aid Road Act, which basically subsidized the states. It didn't really do much with standards. In 1919, the Army sent a convoy across the country, and Dwight Eisenhower was a young officer in this, and he will, of course, be president, who starts the interstate, and as they made their way along the Lincoln Highway, they found, particularly out in Utah and other places where it was pretty desolate, that the road almost disappeared. So that made a big impact on Ike. In 1926, we get the U.S. numbered highway system pictured here. And uh, even though it's called the U.S. system, it was still up to the states to fund and to build. So this photo reminds us of the difference between the interstate signage, uh, the regular U.S. highway signage, some are even numbers, some are odd numbers. There's a whole formula for how the numbers are picked, and that's a pretty fascinating story on its own. Well, this is from a little booklet from 1939 about toll roads and free roads, and Roosevelt was quite interested in this, as were the Germans. And here's a picture of the Autobahn. So this was a long distance highway without traffic lights and partly used by the Germans to move their troops around. Well, when World War II came for us and our factories are cranking out jeeps and trucks and tanks, we realized our highway system was not up to the task of moving all this stuff. So this map of the original interstate tells us that it was officially the national system of interstate and defense highways. A big issue early on was how to pay for the interstate. So Congress set up the Highway Trust Fund, which set up uh, money from gasoline taxes, and that's still how it's funded today, more or less. So here it is, the 1950s, the interstates are being built all over the country. This is a time of great prosperity in our country. And when it came to the urban areas, the interstates just bulldoze their way through a lot of these. And I think in retrospect, we think they maybe could have done that better. Another legacy of the early interstates, these clover leaves are, they're pretty well under-engineered. Uh, you might know sometimes where you've got to merge, there's not enough room given the traffic volumes, but this was really modern at the time. In some places, the interstates ran into opposition. Here's a photograph of a intersection near Boston where the northbound lane were just stopped uh, because of local opposition and state opposition to building the, the interstate there. The longest interstate is I-90, over 3,000 miles long, connecting Logan Airport in Boston to SeaTac Airport in Seattle, Tacoma. The longest north-south is Interstate 95, the main route to Florida for lots of people on the East Coast. Some of you have probably been on I-95. Interstate 70, which goes through Denver, was the last piece to be finished. So it took about 20 years or so, 30 even, for the whole system to be completed. And another special thing about Interstate 70 is it has the highest point on the interstate the Eisenhower Tunnel at over 11,000 feet, west of Denver, about 60 miles or so. The lowest point on the interstate is in Sealy, California, east of San Diego, Interstate 8, 52 feet below sea level. So I think we'd all agree that the interstates are a crucial part of our transportation system, enabling us to go long distances, 
at high speeds.